so uh, we will be seeing uh, Web3 wallets using Algorand, and we will. Uh, I'll just give you a brief overview of what blockchain is and the advantage of using a blockchain on your decentralized app and Web3 uh, wallets in general. And I'll move on to going uh, a demo how to integrate using I, uh, the Python SDK, Algorand's Python SDK. So blockchain is uh, basically a public ledger or a file for a transactional data. So it is actually distributed ac across multiple computers, which is which is makes it, uh, which actually validates the basic idea of it being decentralized. So all of the nodes work together and using the same set of software rules. So every for every net nodes in the computer network, the same set of rules and softwares are applied. So the block part in the blockchain refers to a set of transactions that might be credit a debit or any asset creation or an NFT transfer. So that would, that would be referred to as a, a block. And the chain part refers to as the fact that each block of transaction also contains a proof or a cryptographic hash, which means if it's if that cryptographic hash uh, is changed, the the chain will not will not represent the same as the same block of chains as it represents before. So that makes it uh, really secure. So when we actually see the benefits of using blockchain for our apps, which are basically a D apps or decentralized apps. The basic ones are security, trust, immutability. Immutability means like once a transaction is committed, it's just committed. So and transparency, and which means you can track uh, every step of the transaction uh, from the start up to the finish. And, and the most basic one uh, would be efficiency, since it is distributed across all nodes and also uh, human interference is very much lower so we can consider it as inefficient and when we come to web3 wallets and why we have to use web3 wallets because we have a decentralized control and it, we can have an, an interoperability uh, or operability and cross platform accessibility you can access it from anywhere and privacy and anonymity now these are the basic uh, advantage of using web3 wallets and why we use why we choose algorand so in a, in every blockchain transaction we have two types of two types of protocol so for example we have proof of stake and proof of work so basically proof of stake refers to users having more stake so who holds more of the underlying currency in the system so that party would have a more influence in proposing and validating new blocks which makes it more efficient and for the proof of work nodes actually raise to solve a challenge of crypto cryptographic puzzle and serve up serve up their solution alongside a new block proposal so which means we uh, actually this is referred to as mining and the nodes or each individual nodes which are computers are called miners and the winner is rewarded with some of the underlying currency. So we all know that we, there is a term called Bitcoin mi mining. So this is basically Bitcoin works on the proof of work. But when it comes, when it comes to Algorand, it actually uh, applies to the protocol proof of stake. So which makes it, uh, which, actually, which makes it use less resource and it's efficient and the native currency of algorand would be so basically what proof of work requires is solving a, a, crypto, a, a cryptographic puzzle as i've mentioned before and proof of stake protocols including algorand do not require a large amount of energy to produce a block which means which makes algorand somehow uh, a green initiative blockchain and uh the the native currency is called algo and it's acts as a utility token so which you are build, which we are building an application on top of it and when we need 
we need algos to pay, to pay transaction fees and the transaction fees actually depends on the transaction the amount of transactions we make and the amount of trans transfer we actually apply and when we actually move to an another advantage of algorand it's it is open it's decentralized and it's transparent so we say it is decentralized it is open and permissionless anybody can actually access uh, every transaction and actually see which transaction goes where and which transaction is actually initiated from where so we can actually that is from that it is transparent and it's uh, by openness we mean it's completely open and permissionless and anyone in the world who owns algo can participate in the protocol and last lastly we we while creating a, a, a wallet using algorand we there are multiple options uh, i i put if uh, I, I shared this slide so in the references side we, you can actually see different uh different type of wallets so to, that works efficiently with algorand's blockchain so uh for this demo and we will apply uh, defly mobile app which is uh, a wallet a wallet app which actually create i will demonstrate it on my mobile app as well how to set it up and i will show you how to dispense and dispense uh dispense uh, an algo into your algo account algorand account so this will be available on the testnet so we can actually connect our wallet to the testnet and access our account and after that we can actually create any any assets we want and we can make any transfers we want so uh, i know i'm i'm actually uh, doing it very uh, like in a fast manner but I, I just want to focus on the demo part so let me just share my uh, the code and i'll show you uh, the remaining part Okay, uh, as we can see here, we actually are using uh, the Python's algo SDK, and you can uh, use any language that you actually are familiar with, especially JavaScript or Python. Uh, they use the same SDK, so um, it doesn't really matter. So I will show you how to create an account, and after actually have, after dispensing it, I'll show you how to create an asset and a transfer and i will show you how to do it on the mobile app so yeah so basically we will uh, uh, just give me a moment it's taking a while to load So after you install uh, the Python uh, Algo SDK, you can actually use the generate account uh, to create to uh, to spread uh, the private key and the public 
the public address so the, pre the account will be actually known using the public address any transaction will be actually known based on the, the public address so the private key will stay with bond so after that we can actually see the, pri the private key and the public algorand address so this public algorand address will be available uh, to uh, create any transaction and we can actually see the new the new unix site from then the, yeah so the unix uh, represents uh, i think about 22 about 22 uh, words that uh, can be generated from the private key and Okay, uh, go on a bit, I'm sorry. Sorry, can you uh, zoom in okay. a little bit? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh, is it better now? Yes, yes, much better. Okay. I hope you can see it also. Sorry. Okay, so, yeah, and I will share this uh, notebook. Uh, and yeah, we can, you can actually do, play around with it and create your own transaction. So we can just for Okay. Yeah, so you, you are right. Like the most used are proof of stake and proof of uh, uh, work. So basically we, most of the Web3 technologies uh, are like they can't actually win on all of the pro all of the goals for example security and uh, transparency openness and also to actually overcome overcome those uh triangulated problem we uh, algorand is al al the idea of algorand becomes proof of uh, stake rather than proof of proof of work so proof of work might not be available in the efficiency side or somehow in, in the security side but when you actually are using proof of uh, uh, proof of stake we are sure that uh, the uh, the blockchain or the consecutive blocks are created by someone who has more stake in, the, in that particular transaction okay. let me continue and after that, we can just uh, play around by creating some some accounts, and I'll show you uh, how to dispense uh, each of the account each of the accounts. So, for example, let's just dispense account two and three. Yeah, let me just share my whole screen for now. Uh, okay, so this is the uh, Algorand dispenser. So we paste here our uh, account address, and after we build the captcha, we can uh, dispense it and we can check the account's balance after that. So now, we, if we check uh, account who's uh, balance we can see uh so uh before that uh i think uh, I, I don't know how many of you guys set up uh, uh algorand sandbox for dev uh, on your local pc and if you do it this this code will work but i'm not running it actually uh, at the moment so uh, we just basically follow the steps on the on the sandbox page on github and after you clone the github page you just uh apply uh, the, the rest of the readme and it will just work so yeah and after that we can actually check on the testnet part so for the testnet part uh when you dispense using the algorand uh using this uh, algorand dispenser it will apply on the testnet not on the dev network you just set up set up uh, using the sandbox so 
to use a, to actually use the test net you need to actually uh, do it uh, in the in the cloud you use the link as the cloud so for example which means testnet dash api dot algonote dot cloud uh, so you can check here so account balance is uh, and we can actually check the, the ones that we actually haven't dispensed yet and it will come as zero micro algos so let's just take this one and dispense now if we check yeah, we'll take a few minutes and yeah, as you can see we have uh we have uh, uh dispense successfully dispensed an algo to this account so we can check our account by using uh, this method and as i've mentioned so while you are using setting up setting it up in the in the uh in your react app like the since you will have a front end app let's don't react so while you are using the wallet connector uh, in your react app you have to specify which uh, test test net you are using so for example if you are using the sandbox you have to specify the sandbox uh token and also the sandbox local url so which is by default it runs on local host uh, at port 4001 so you have to specifically uh give that address i'll demonstrate that on the react part later but that's just uh it's just a quick reminder so for a quick transaction we can see we can check the balance by back in force and yeah let's just transfer some funds to to this account from this account to our previously copied or which is account two so let's just get some funds so and basically we have to you have to actually modify this uh, while you are creating an algo an algo decline so if you are using that as i mentioned before if you are using the sandbox you have to mention you have to specify the algo token and the algo the address and also you have to somehow uh make it like uh, give it a header because since you need to pass an api key or an access token so basically algo d token would be for the sandbox you will get it on the you will see it on the github page but it will it is just uh, 64 s so uh, a which is written 64 times so let's let's just run this and so we can actually see the transaction id and we have we are waiting for a confirmation and after that we can actually check the balance so we actually transferred funds from account uh to, uh, to, to account three so we can check the account so receiver address is this one so we can actually check and we can we as we can see we have we have successfully transferred ten thousand micro algos and we specified uh, the send amount right here so basically we can see the the transaction actually making an effect and you can actually check this transaction for each account by uh, while you are setting it up on the while setting it up on the wallet app and i'll just show you the demonstration part for that too but it's just uh, great uh, yeah i'll just show you how to create an asset after i showed you how to set up using the app so let's just move back to the slide and let's move on to the defly app so for the defly app there is an android and an ios app so after you install the app you will uh 
as uh, the steps clearly written here, you go to the preferences and activate the developer mode, which uh, give you access to the testnet. So basically, the testnet is the same testnet as uh, at this, at this uh, URL mentioned. So testnet API dot dot cloud. So you can use this one uh, for that testnet. And uh, as I've shown you, you can uh, dispense it using uh, algo dispenser and most of the APIs are uh, written on the Swagger page, which is uh, you can uh, check each. The, especially the public, the public ones don't require uh, any any access tokens, so you can actually check. So, for example, we can actually check an account or account here. So, for example, let's let's check. And make sure to actually change this one to the test mate. And yeah, basically we can actually check this account, the, the amount, uh, the amount in micro algos. And yeah, so we, we can you can actually play around on this uh, API page, uh, playground, and you can check the algo node. Uh, official documentation for more referrals. And you can actually check all the testnets, uh, the testnet APIs available. So the indexer and the Algodia APIs. So for each, you can actually check here. And they have uh, somehow uh, the most of the, uh, most of the APIs, or almost all of the APIs use the SDK. So you just create a client after you create a client, all the you, you don't actually need to call all this make this API calls. So basically, the API calls are handled by the handled by the SDK. So SDK the SDK will act as a wrapper for this uh, this REST endpoints. So you can uh, you can actually apply that. So when we move on to the React part. Uh, let me just show you how to connect it to uh, connect it using the defly mobile app so let me just add an account there and i'll, I'll share my my mobile uh, now now Give me a few seconds. So let me just okay. Uh, let me just share the screen from my mobile and try.
So basically from here we can open the open the app and we I'm currently connecting you to the testnet. So let me just show you how to set it up. And so we go to the preference side and we go to the advanced side and we scroll down to the develop the developer mode. So by default it's turned off. So we have to enable it. So after we enable it, we uh, after we restart, it, it will uh, enable the test mode. So now let's just uh, let's just import an account. So I will import the second account or the account that I'm just making transactions with, and I will just show you how to import it. So when we add the plus icon, we can import an account. So by importing means we actually have to input all the 25 all the 25 minions yeah and we, we can move on to that so let's just let me just give it uh and import account and after that it will uh load the account and it will show me how many algos i have so i can just check the transactions here so let me just show you the transaction which is the transfers that, that i've just created before so uh i have uh transferred 10 algos from the dispenser and i just transferred 0 0.1 algos to the to the to the account and you, you can actually check the transaction ID and which is actually the same as the transaction ID that was returned from while we are actually committing the transaction. So yeah, and now we can actually check it. So so that's how you import and set up uh, using the dfly app. So for the React side, while you are trying to connect to the to the dfly wallet, it will uh, pop up a QR code. I will just demo that right now. So for the React part, there is a, a brief uh, introduction on the documentation. So how to create, uh, how to use the use wallet. So we can just, you can uh, check the, the, document, the documentation for how to use the use wallet provider. So, so how to apply it and how to actually connect and what are the SDKs required. So I'll just show you the, some of the the initial setups if with the required initial setups. So for example, let's just start this. This is just the, the, the bare minimum React app required to start and connect to the DeFly to the DeFly wallet. So I'll just after it uh, I, I, I'll show you how to connected to the wallet and how a transaction is actually committed and connected to the DeFi wallet. So basically while, uh, so let me just disconnect and connect it, uh, connect it again. So on the mobile, on the mobile app, it will actually, uh, so, while I'm trying to connect on the mobile app, I can. Uh, there is an option to scan the QR code. So after I scan it, it will be. So uh, as you can see, this is this was the account, which is. Uh, which was this account? Uh, I, I was just trying to connect with. 
using the dfly app so on the dfly side you can actually check uh, this and uh, on the while trying to create a transaction you just uh, there is an implementation on the on the GitHub page and you can actually use that implementation to create a transaction so this is just to list all the available providers on your uh, dfly app and displaying account details and after that you have signing and sending transactions so when you actually try to send and uh, transaction it will uh, show you this prompt saying please launch the defly wallet app on your ios or android and a pop-up will appear and you just hit confirm and after that you are good to go you are good to go to uh yeah and you can actually hit, you will see after the transaction is committed yeah, so successfully send the transaction id so you can actually track this transaction id on your defly app and check from where, from where it was originated so lastly uh, i can show you uh, how to create an asset using using uh, the testnet so as we can see let's just use this account which is attached to our uh, to our bfly app and let's just create an asset so yeah let me just run this function and for that we can actually uh, change the, trans, uh, the account to the account we want so for example we uh, we want under address three so address three is uh, the sender which means all the address is reserved or the assets created are reserved to this address so basically address three is this one and let me just change it so I, we so i can so on the mobile app we can see the assets created so let me just in address three So this is the account that is that has been connected to the mobile app so that's why um, i'm changing it and after that we just uh, create an nft so this url mostly it is uh, it represents the ipfs url so which means uh, decentralized uh, url so which means uh, you can actually create an ipfs uh, an ipfs storage and uh, you can you, you will get the link after you set up uh, an ipfs storage you will apply the link here so basically it depends on how you implement your project but if you are not like if you are not successful to create an ipfs you just create some uh, url that represents the image so now we are creating an asset Okay. Uh, so it's not change it. So yeah, uh, my bad here. Um passing an id of the, pri the private key id is from the account zero which actually doesn't represent the doesn't represent the actual uh, this account's private key that's why it's showing me an error so i have to fix that quickly so account zero actually represents this one the this uh, the the previous uh Counter this so if I change that to this, it will work since I already dispensed some some amount to that, so it will work. Yeah. So the basically the error was um, I was using a different public key and a private key, so 
while we are actually trying to sign the transaction using that private key, it will not work. So, the, yeah. So we, we you actually see it on the on the DeFi app. So you can actually see the actual assets being created or transferred there. So basically, this is how you create a, an asset. I will share this notebook, and you will find uh, plenty of resources on the on the Algorand developer uh, documentation. And yeah, basically all the all the SDKs or all, all the APIs are applied by based on the SDK. So uh, you don't have to actually create make the requests as I've mentioned before. So if you have uh, any questions, uh, yeah, you can ask me now. Uh, I am out of the right. Yeah, and from the notebook side, uh, yeah, I will share it with the uh, Academy team, and yeah, you, it will be available to you, so you can actually use it as a reference. But basically, I will share the React app too, and yeah, because how you create an, a transaction on, on the React app. So basically, it's just uh, using that reference, and uh, I have actually attached plenty of references on the slide so you can check those references as well Okay, thank you, Nate. So it looks like uh, anyone doesn't have a question. So could you thumbs up to understand his tutorial? So we can. If you have any questions, just give us a thumbs up to understand. If you have any questions, okay, thank you, Yaya. So, one last chance if you have any questions. So, uh, I hope uh, you have some ideas on how to create and connect uh, on connect your wallet with your laptop and also how to uh, manipulate any transactions and create NFTs using the Python SDK. Yeah. So if there is, if anything is unclear, we can just ask me. So I have a quick question. Okay. Um, so, yesterday we went through uh, Algo Kit with Rahmat, and uh, I, what I wanted to ask is if you are going to use Algo Kit uh is there a difference between what we saw today and what we used yesterday so i guess this could be a question to both you not nail in rahmat so basically uh what i what i just showed you is just for the wallet specific side so anything other than that you can you can use it is done like uh, depending on your business logic and what you're actually trying to implement on and also it depends on how you are trying to implement it but 
for the wallet side, there are mm, multiple wallets. I've just showed you the DeFi part, but there are mm, plenty of wallet providers, so you can use that. And also, you can mm, most of the previous uh, algorand. For example, there was a playground called Pure Tech that you can apply and use. Uh, use test nets but mo most of the uh most of them are actually discontinued right now so i think pure stake was just discontinued last week and uh algo signer is already discontinued and uh algo wallet will be discontinued uh, on january so or thirty first and so basically uh just Try to check the documentations if you have any other confusion. But all the uh, all the documents actually refers to the latest ones, the latest documentation, which is which doesn't include the discontinued packages. I hope I answered the questions. Um, okay. One thing to add. Uh, so yesterday, when Rahmat showed us the calculator application, th there was no such logic as like connecting to a wallet using uh, what we saw today. I think all of those was uh, taken care of by AlgoKit. So if I'm not mistaken, so I'm not sure if using AlgoKit would be a different path than this. I'm sorry, uh, Rahmat. Yeah. Here, Abdul Hamid. So yes. we are showing you different options that you can connect with Algorand blockchain. I have showed you one of the way you can use this. Just there are different options to build your application by different mechanisms. So uh, the yesterday we are particularly focused on using local net of testing your app on your machine. That's why I choose Algo Algo Keep local net, or I can choose sand, Sandbox for those options. So uh, just understand these two tutorials as different options to get to know algorithm blockchain in different ways you choose the what's best for you to do your to, to do the project and you move forward with that uh, is that new Abdul Hamid? yes yes yeah. thank you uh, if someone has raised uh an hand you can go ahead and ask nothing exact question uh, is that is that you I believe I, I think someone has raised question the hand okay I really can continue okay so my question is uh, so basically the wallet serves as a public address so that we can uh, associate some assets uh, with the wallet as I understand so the thing is uh, if uh, if we cannot uh, access the wallet, you know, for example, the creator wallet, uh, so the transferred asset to the wallet will be lost forever, or just like blockchain technology, or is there a way to recover that assets by undoing or some sort of thing that you explained, like what you explained earlier today? Uh. So most almost all of all transactions are final in the blockchain. So you can't really do a trans I mean undo a transaction. So so creating or minting an NFT is one uh, is an is a transaction by itself. So so once you are associated with a certain uh, certain wallet address, that will be uh, the owner of that NFT. So. Uh, it basically means non fungible token, that's why it's called non fungible. So, uh, and after that, the owner has to actually transfer that asset to another address in order to, uh, so in, in order to make it actually available for others. Basically, also, if I minted uh, an NFT by my, my wallet address or my public address, I'm just the owner. And in that regard, if anybody wants to actually validate and access that 
uh, yeah, what we what the project actually can go on is so, for example, I'm issuing a certificate for somebody, for example, for Abel. Uh, so for uh, Abel, um, uh, after I'm left, after I created the asset, I can transfer to Abel. So next, so for, now uh, we can actually track where the certificate comes from, which is from my public address. So based on that, we can verify it, and also based on uh, you you being the owner, you can be verified. You can you can go on like that, but it depends on how you want to solve this particular challenge. This particular challenge. Yeah, basically, just the the simplest answer would be uh, all transactions are. No, you cannot undo a transaction in a blockchain. So, uh, any more questions? If there's none, we can, I guess, finalize the meeting. Well, okay, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Have a good day. Goodbye, everyone.